Hey everybody, welcome back to chemistry. And so now we're getting toward the end of this chapter and we want to look at something called periodic properties. And the one we're going to look at in this presentation is the property of atomic size. But before we begin, let me talk a little bit about what a periodic property is. First off, what does periodic mean? Periodic means repeating. So a periodic property is some kind of property of atoms that as you go through the periodic table, it tends for some reason to repeat itself. So let me just give you a, sort of a quick example. Um, so imagine here we have this periodic table. And so let's say you're focused in on the left side of the periodic table. So you're focused at the beginning and you're down to period two, which is row two. And so you might recall that the first element there is atomic number three, which is lithium. So it may have some kind of property. So maybe this property has a relatively high value. Then you go to the next element over, which is beryllium, which is atomic number four, and you find that the properties change a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit less than what it was with lithium. And then you go to the next element, which is atomic number five, which is boron, and it's even less. And so as you go across the period, this property gets less and less and less until you get to the end of period two, and you find that neon atomic number 10 has an even lessest of this value of this property. But then when you go back to the beginning of the periodic table and now you're in the third period, atomic number 11, this property becomes large again. But then as you go across the third period, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to the end, where it's the smallest. And then when you go down to period four, the fourth row, it gets large again. So this would be a repeating property. And so atomic size or the sizes of atoms are or is a periodic property. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if I can blow up the slide just for a second. This is actually a picture of an abbreviated periodic table. So you can sort of see here that there are elements displayed here. But to sort of understand this picture a little bit better, let me go to a picture of a regular periodic table and explain how that other picture relates to this. So this is the regular periodic table. And so maybe one of the things you might remember is that this first two column of elements here is the S block. And then down here, we have the P block of elements. And so in this picture, which I'm gonna go back to, we are not looking at the transition elements, nor are we looking at the inner transition elements down here. What this picture is, is you're kind of smushing the S block against the P block and looking at that. So let me go back to the picture here. So these rows here are the S block elements. And then the next rows here, this block are the P block elements, okay. So let me just erase this really quickly. So what this periodic table shows you is the actual relative sizes of the atoms. And so let's just kind of focus in on period two. And so what you can see is that when you're at the beginning of period two, you have lithium here, which is atomic number three, and it's a relatively large atom as shown by the picture. But then as you go across this row here to beryllium, the boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, the atom just gets smaller and smaller. And so the way we figure out that the atom is getting smaller and smaller is that we have a technique where we can actually measure the radius of the atom. And so you might recall the radius here is say, we're gonna look at this picture of lithium. The radius is the distance from the nucleus, which I'm drawing as a dot. And then I'm gonna draw, or actually I'm just gonna show that the edge of the sphere here is the highest energy level, which is the second energy level. And so the radius is merely the distance from the nucleus out to the edge of the sphere. And so that distance there is a very small distance and it's measured in picometers, there's 152 picometers. And so as you can see, when you get to beryllium, you go across the row, it's a smaller distance and you get the boron, it gets even smaller and so on. So you can see that as you go across a period or a row of elements, the atoms as indicated by their atomic radii get smaller and smaller. At the same time, as you go down a group of elements here, 
you will notice is that the atoms, as indicated by the radii, get larger and larger. And so now what I want to do is talk a little bit about why that happens. And so if I can reduce the slide. So what I want to do now is explain why as you go across a row or a period of elements, the radii are getting smaller and smaller, and why is it as you go down a group of elements, the radii are getting larger and larger. This is something you need to know. And so one thing I sort of need to explain before I give you a reason is to point out that whenever you have a positive charge and you have a negative charge, because these charges are oppositely charges, they're going to feel a force of attraction between one another. And so the way we might indicate that there's a force of attraction here, um, we put an arrow, say, heading here, and from the negative charge, it's heading toward the positive charge. And here we have, again, a force of attraction. So what a force is, as you learn in physics, it's either a push or a pull. And so here, these um, particles, one is positive, one is negative, they're feeling a pull between them that's going to bring them in. Now, one thing you need to be aware of is if you have two positive charges stuck together like that, and then two negative charges stuck together like that, there's going to even be a stronger force. In fact, the force is going to be four times as strong as, say, when you have a single positive charge attracting a single negative charge. And so to indicate that, I'll just draw a broader arrow here. So this is a force here that's even stronger between the positive charges and the negative charges. And so if you were to have something with three positive charges and three negative charges, you even get a stronger force. And so this force here, which is even stronger between these positive and negative charges, is going to be about nine times the strength as, say, compared to the force between a single positive and negative charges. So you can imagine here, we can apply this to atoms. And so the positive charges are going to be the protons and the nucleus, while the negative charges are going to be the electrons and the electron cloud. So I think you can see is that as you're growing across a row of atoms, what happens is you're increasing the atomic number. You're increasing the number of protons and positive charges in the nucleus, but at the same time, you're also increasing the number of electrons and electron clouds. So as you go out, you're going to get a stronger force between those electrons and protons, and that's going to tend to bring the electron clouds in. So to emphasize this a little bit, let me just draw a very fast picture here. So I'm going to draw a lithium atom. So here is the nucleus of lithium. It's got three protons and some unknown number of neutrons. We're not going to worry about that. But here, the nucleus, we're going to indicate that it's positively charged. It's got three protons. And so here's its first energy level. And here's its second energy level. And so we have an electron here in the first energy level, and we have another one here. And in the second energy level, we have a third and final electron. So this is good old lithium. So let's compare that to beryllium. Beryllium is atomic number four. Four protons, four electrons. What would that look like? Well, here is the nucleus of beryllium, but now it doesn't have three protons. It has four. That's going to bring in the electron clouds of beryllium a little closer to the nucleus than what we see with lithium. So now here I'm trying to draw the first energy level a little bit closer to the nucleus here. And then I'm going to try to draw the second energy level also a little bit closer to the nucleus. And so the reason why these energy levels were brought in was because you just have more positive charge in the nucleus and negative charge here out in the electron clouds. And so the radius of this atom is going to be smaller. So here, the radius in lithium is defined from the nucleus to the highest energy level. And so this radius is going to be 152 picometers. And then here, this radius with beryllium is going to be smaller. It's going to be 112 picometers. OK, so now we understand why is it you go across a row of elements the radii are getting smaller. So it raises the next question. Why is it as you're going down a column of elements, 
the atoms get larger. Okay, so let me explain that one. This one's actually not too difficult to understand. Um, so here we're at sodium. And so sodium is a much larger atom, as you can see in that picture there. So why is that the case? Well, the main difference between sodium and lithium is that it has a lot more electrons. So while lithium has three electrons and beryllium has four electrons, sodium here, down one from lithium, has 11 electrons. So let's draw a picture of that. So here is sodium, it has a lot of positive charge, right, in the nucleus. So here's its first energy level. It's really brought in pretty close, right? And so there are two electrons in it. It's much closer than lithium's first energy level to its nucleus. The second energy level is also pretty much brought in, right? And so now with sodium here, we have eight electrons in the second energy level. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so there's gonna be a pretty strong force between the second energy level and the nucleus. That'll bring in the second energy level. So right now it seems like sodium is smaller than lithium. So imagine what is different about sodium to make it actually larger than lithium. What is different is this. So far we've put in 10 electrons, two in the first energy level, and eight in the second energy level, but we have one more. Guess where that goes? That goes out in a third energy level. So it's way out here. So here, the distance from the nucleus to the edge of the third energy level is much greater than the distance from the nucleus to the edge of the second energy level in lithium. Um, so this is going to be here 186 picometers. So the reason why you go down a group, the atoms get larger and larger and larger, is because as you go down a group, what you're doing is you're just adding another energy level. So when you go down to potassium, which is below sodium, which has 19 electrons, to carry those 19 electrons, we need not only a first, second, and third energy level, but we need a fourth energy level. So that's even gonna be larger. So thank you for listening to that presentation. We'll see you next time.